Good Monday evening to you. Um, here we are mid-October. It's a big week in Young Living Land if you haven't been paying attention. Uh, there are some big early holiday sales, like this holiday sales event. That's gonna, it's kind of it's kind of like how Amazon did their pre-Amazon Day thing last week. Young Living soon, something sort of similar, a launch of a holiday sale. And there's some really, really great, really great deals. Um, I mean, I'm I'm in awe of the diffuser deals and some of the other uh, items that are discounted or deeply discounted. Um, so if you haven't had the chance to go check that out, please go check that out. Do some investigating either over in Essential Ed or on Young Living's actual website right there. Um, and, and go look at what some of the holiday launch sales are. They're really great. And this is just, I, I laugh thinking this is going to be the year where it's like, and you get a diffuser and you get a diffuser and you get a diffuser because you can't get a better price on a diffuser in a big box retail store. Um, then, and Young Living's giving you their high quality, great, that are their high quality diffuser that comes with a really great warranty, uh, a one year warranty. Um, so I, I, it just doesn't get better than that. So if you're in need of diffusers and who isn't, uh, please go check that out. But on to kind of what we're talking about here tonight, we're continuing in our select 30 series. Um, where we're spotlighting certain oils from the Select 30 series. Select 30 series is a group of oils um, that Young Living has put together uh, into one kit and uh, it's their 30 most popular oils. And so we just thought we'd highlight that. One of the great things about this is you can save up and get use your loyalty rewards points to be able to get this Select 30 kit. Um, and you can go back and look at all the different things that we talked about of the different oils in this series, but there's just some really great oils here. Um, and sp specifically in this class, what we're going to talk about today, um, there is uh, four single oils that we're going to talk about. And, and what's great is that some of these are um, actually... Actually, my Siri thinks I'm talking to her. Uh, some of these are actually available for free this month as promos. Um, and we talked a little bit about that at the beginning of the month, but I said I would be doing a deeper dive with you as time went on. So uh, let's dive in. First one up is cinnamon bark. Um, cinnamon bark is a familiar scent for most people if you spend any time baking. Um, it is the extraction me method is that it's steam distilled from the bark. Um, historically, it's listed in um, Dioscorides' uh, De, De Materia Medica, um, which is a book compiled in AD 78, um, Europe's first authoritative guide to medicines, um, and it became the standard reference work for herbal treatments for over 1,700 years. Um, so this is something that has a long history of being used um, for these medical medicinal ways. Um, it's very um, supportive of the body. It's a very strong oil. So any of those types of things where you're trying to really knock something out, um, this would be a great oil for that. Uh, supportive of the cardiovascular system, um, support, supportive of the immune system as it kind of fights off some things. Um, it's supportive of the digestive system. Um, and it's fragrant influences, funny enough, are, it's thought to attract wealth. That is a, that's kind of the old wives tale of that. So it's, it's actually in the abundance oil as a result. Um, you definitely, this is an oil you're going to want to dilute. Um, and that's because it's, it's hot. And in fact, it's so hot or so uh, strong and abundant. It's just, is a, just a very, um, the best, uh, the only really word, strong or hot oil that it may even irritate the nasal membranes of your nose if you inhale it directly um, from the diffuser or the bottle, or you put it right up to your nose. You might find your even your the sensitive membranes inside your nose would be irritated. So that's something to just like take note of. Make sure you kind of ease your go low and slow with how you use these, especially these hot oils. Think about using them on your feet. Think about diluting them um, probably in a one to four ratio as it comes to uh, cinnamon bark. Um, some of the testimonials that people have shared um, that there, there was some person and there was a person who swore by 
the, we often talk in this group about, uh, and in central ed about if you're falling under the wellness line to put a drop of thieves under your tongue every hour, um, just to support the immune system and all of those, um, blood vessels right there are sublingually, um, it helps it get into the blood system pretty fast. Um, but another one person swears by this use for cinnamon bark. Now note, it is going to be really hot. So you probably want to try diluting first and see how, how you can, what your threshold of being able to handle that is. Um, one person said they put a drop with local honey, like a teaspoon of local honey, just to, you know, help cut it some, and that they just really swore by that helping them when they were, um, fighting something off or falling below, below the wellness line. Um, so it's a really, it's just a really great oil. It's a good one for baking. Um, it's a good one to put maybe in tea, um, for the same reasons. Um, so, you know, this is just a really versatile and really great oil. It's also a biblical oil. Uh, it's got references in Exodus, Proverbs, and Song of Solomon. Um, and it's listed in some of the things that, um, are spices that are used or uh, ways that the bed is perfumed or um, uh, oils that were used or um, spices and herbs and stuff that were used in the temple and all of the temple uh, things that went on um, in Israel's time. So emotionally, cinnamon bark has an emotion of irritation. So if you're finding yourself irritated a lot, cinnamon bark might be your best friend. The way out, the, or the other side of irritation is bliss. Um, and then the way out would be saying bliss runs through me. Um, you could also substitute that, like I say, with any of these, the way out, those way out statements, you can find one that works for you. That's kind of in that same vein, or, um, you know, you could even do, Hey, the joy of the Lord is my strength or something like that. If you wanted to make it more, uh, faith-based, um, you know, take a big whiff and think those things, um, be careful with those hands that you just put oils on because again, um, it's a hot oil. So don't make sure you're, you're keeping track of what you've been touching and where you put your hands. Don't put them on your eyes or anything like that. Um, the other, um, emotion associated with cinnamon bark is phony. So if this, if you, if you struggle with imposter sy syndrome or being fake or feeling inauthentic, this might be another way to use cinnamon bark. The other side of it is real. And the way out is I embrace life um, or something similar to that. So that is cinnamon bark in a nutshell. Of course, there's plenty more we could say, but we're going to try and keep it, um, like I, as I like to say, we're going to keep it wave tops. We're not going to do too deep of a dive on what we're looking at here. So uh, moving along, we're going to go to clove. Now, clove is a... Uh, all of these oils, I, I, I should have mentioned this up front, all four of the oils we'll talk about tonight um, are super uh, great for the fall candle replacement for your diffusers, right? Um, so one of the things you think about is uh, maybe as I go through the oils, which are cinnamon bark, clove, orange, and northern light black spruce go through those four oils and think about which of those scents that you like more. Cinnamon bark and clove obviously being more earthy and more uh, herbal, like baking heavy type, orange being citrusy and Northern Lights Black Spruce being um, a, a spruce, so pine-ish oil and it's warm uh, smell there and scent there. But combine and, and kind of play with different combinations of these four oils. And it makes a really awesome diffuser blend or leave one or two out or, um, you know, add more of one or the other. And you can really test and experiment, um, with these kinds of oils, um, and, and get yourself a diffuser blend that's custom made. I like sometimes to just have the di diffuser blend told to me, but lately I've been enjoying experimenting with a little bit more of this or a little bit more of that. Um, so next up is going to be clove and, um, the extraction method is that it's steam distilled from flower, bud, and stem. Um, historical data shows that the people on the island of Ternate were free from epidemics until the 16th century when Dutch conquerors destroyed the clove trees that flourished on the islands. Many of the islanders died from the epidemics that followed. Cloves were reputed to be part of the Marseille vinegar or the Four Thieves vinegar that 
bandits who robbed the dead and dying used to protect themselves during the 15th century plague. So those are some of the historical things associated with this particular oil. Um, the Four Thieves of Vinegar, of course, is where we get the name thieves and clove is an important aspect or an important member of the thieves combination of uh, oils to make that great blend. Clove was listed in Hildegard's Medicine, a comp which is a compilation of early German medicines by highly regarded Benedictine herbalist Hildegard of Bingen, and that was in 1098 to 1179 is when he lived. So that was the time when um, these monk monasteries and monastic uh, uh, brotherhoods and sisterhoods uh, were, were the main place that you would go for help if you needed an inn or you needed care or you needed, they almost were the original hospitals. And so Hildegard being a, a monk came up with this. Healers in China and India have used clove buds since ancient times as part of their treatments. Eugenol, which is clove's principal um, active constituent. In fact, their its key constituent, eugenol, is somewhere about seventy-five to eighty-seven percent of the of the constituents are eugenol. Um, and eugenol, clove's principal constituent, was used in the dental industry for years to numb gums. And so, just from hearing that, you're going to have a sense of the types of things I'm going to key in on with clove really great to support anything in the mouth that's kind of going awry. Um, it, it does have a um, sense of kind of like numbing and, and helping in that way. Um, it's great for um, supporting the cardiovascular system. It's good for uh, supporting joints, um, uh, especially as you get older. Um, it's, it's just a really good one is it was in thieves. So it's in thieves. So that should show you it's supportive of the immune system as well. Fragrant influences. Um, it's a mental stimulant. Um, and it also, um, so I say a mental stimulant and you might think immediately, well, then that makes, means I'm going to be wide awake, but it's also really good for encouraging sleep. Um, and while you sleep, stimulating dreams and creating a sense of protection and courage, so this might be a really good one to try throwing in your diffuser every now and then or throwing in your kids diffusers every now and then um, to give that sense of protection and courage. Um, this is another one that you're going to want to want to dilute um, and um, a few testimonials. Oh, uh, another thing, it has some properties that. Um, uh, some of its constituents have properties that are similar to what might be found. Um, if you were if you were using it in conjunction with like aspirin or uh, warfarin, um, it, it could enhance those properties of those drugs. So if you if you're consistently using something like that, you just need to pay attention to not doing that, not using clove too much. Um, some testimonials. There were tons of testimonials, of course, dealing with any sort of mouth considerations, all manner of mouth, gum teeth support. Um, so this is, a, of course, one that you're going to go to. This is something dentists have known and used for years, for many, many centuries. Um, and, and one surprising thing um, that I hadn't really considered was uh, people were using it when, um, in, instead of oregano, to support um, warts, to help um, help the body as it deals with warts and just putting it directly on and being really careful to keep it specific to that specific area. And some people even identifying that oregano wasn't something that was helpful, but clove was. Um, so maybe take that on board and, and into consideration. Um, some people shared about how it was supportive of helping with nerve, um, nerve support, nerve issues. So if that's you, uh, consider that um, reaching for clove. If uh, some of your other pan away or some of the others that you might go to aren't, maybe maybe you need something else a little more than try clove for that. Um, and someone shared that it removed marker from an area that they that lemon oil wouldn't make any difference. Lemon oil didn't make any difference and they tried and tried with that. And then it occurred to them to try clove because they had read it somewhere and then they put clove on and let it, sit for just a little bit and then it came right up. So um, they were really impressed with that. Um, one thing that got mentioned was for like a tickling um, throat or cough, you could put a drop on the back of the tongue. Um, so again, clove is gonna be a hot one. So you need to really have a sense of whether you need to dilute that or not. You need to know what your own comfort and ability is. 
emotionally, uh, it is the emotion is lashing out. And the other side of that is discretion. And the way out is truth comes through me. So if that's you, um, Clove is your new friend. Um, moving along to orange. Now, this is one that I, I we all know and love, right? Everybody, uh, I, I mean, I love all the citrus oils, to be honest. So it's um, not one that's uncommon to me, but it's fun to always kind of do a deeper dive on some of these ones that we use all the time. Uh, the extraction method, of course, is cold press from the rind. And that was always going to tell us if something's cold pressed from a rind, that we need to be careful when we're using it because it could be photosensitive. Um, so we need to not go and not put it anywhere on our body that it's going to be exposed to the sun in the next six to eight to even maybe 12 hours if you want to be extra cautious. So if you're using it on skin that's sun accessible, you want to do that application at night only. Um, medical properties, in, I mean, it, it is uh, really helpful in supporting the circulatory system. Um, and it's really helpful in relaxing, helping to relax and unwind. Um, it, for the fragrant influences, it's uplifting and, and, um, antidepressant, uh, a Mick, uh, yeah, Mick university study found that citrus fragrances boosted immunity, induced relaxation and reduced depression. So if you're, as we go into this uh, moment of seasonal affect disorder, right? Um, if you find yourself in a place that can get gloomy in the winter time, so we call citrus fresh, a bottle of sunshine. Use these citrus oils to help boost the mood in your room. And uh, as you're doing your work or as you're going about your in your house or wherever you find yourself, if you're in your car and it feels gloomy with traffic or something, maybe try citrus oil to help boost the mood. Um, People, one person particularly shared with Orange, aside from those obvious, I mean, those things that I've just listed, another person really mentioned that it was super helpful in dealing with uh, circulation. Uh, they would apply it at night to their feet, and it was just really, really helpful to when they were having their body needed a little extra circulatory support. And of course, it just smells so awesome. So this is one of those oils where it's not hard. I mean, all of them so far actually are oils I love the smell of. So some of them, some oils I don't love, but all of these are ones that are really great and I don't mind smelling. Um, the emotion associated with orange is ridicule. Um, and the other side of ridicule is applauded. And the way out is I am honorable. If you're feeling ridiculed or if you found if you walk away from an interaction or a situation you're feeling some level of ridicule let's reach for that orange and kind of process the emotions that we've experienced in that moment last but certainly not least is northern lights black spruce um this is one that in my i have a sixth edition desk reference and it, there's no there's nothing in it about northern lights black spruce because it's that new of an oil because it's very specific um this was a uh, this is a, actually a really cool story of the uh, where Northern Lights Black Spruce is distilled. Um, in I wanted to share with you uh, where what that is. Um, so let me. It, it's one that Gary Young himself went and searched for, and did extensive looking and hunting to find the exact right farm and then just had, bought it in August and just relentlessly went after being able to have it up and running because he wanted these, this oil, this um, black spruce oil was really critical and a, and a lot of very popular oils like Valor. Um, and we, they were in short supply of it. And so he just was like, Hey, if I can't find the farms that, that meet my threshold, I'm going to go make my own. And he just worked like his tail off through the winter, even in these really negative 30 frigid degree temperatures. And um, by March had the first uh, distillation going. And it was just this like Herculean effort um, that he put on. So let me share, um, let me share this with you. If, if, and I'll let you see for yourself what he does here. On March 9, 2015, Young Living distilled black spruce essential oil for the first time at the Northern Lights Farm. 
It was the result of months of hard work and the culmination of over 20 years of dedication to our seed to seal commitment to quality. The Northern Lights Farm has been a passion project for Young Living founder and CEO, D. Gary Young from the beginning. Located in Northern British Columbia, the farm's harsh climate is ideal for producing hardy, essential oil-rich trees, a key factor in Gary's selection of the area. Black spruce essential oil reflects the character of the trees from which it is distilled, echoing their resilient, deeply rooted strength. Those who visit the farm can see firsthand the role it plays in honoring Young Living's commitment to the seed to seal process. Gary's dedication to sustainable, independent sourcing of essential oils is a hallmark of his career. His hands-on participation with the selection of the farmland as well as the first distillation of Northern Lights Black Spruce is only the latest evidence of that passion. So of course that's when it was brand new. Um, and one of the things, uh, it's kind of neat to read, I have his, the autobiography or kind of the biography of like what Gary was accomplishing at this time. And he writes even a poem about um, the Northern Lights and, the, and what the Northern Lights and the Black Spruce and how even, you know, as we know that that's done through, um, you know, particles that are flares off of our sun that are being absorbed by our atmosphere and this extra energy and stuff. So even kind of talking, speaking to the energy that um, the, the black, these black spruce that are exposed to the Northern Lights so consistently up there in British Columbia, because they are so far North, like what that means and this additional um, thing to it. So uh, the part that's used is you saw their needles branch and wood. I bet you didn't expect those vats to be that deep. It's pretty fun. It's pretty wild those to when you look down in them, how deep they are and how much they have to be filled up. Um, so it's steam distilled as you saw. Uh, the Northern Lights Black Spruce uh, is very grounding and earth connecting um, in its aroma and it enhances and uplifts uh, the spirit. And it's a, a great thing to have for soothing muscles after activity. Um, when you combine it with massage, it's a great oil for that. Um, it's been known historically to the Lakota Indians to strengthen their ability to communicate with what they call the great spirit. Um, traditionally, it was believed to possess the frequency of prosperity. Northern Lights Black Spruce is, um, it's exclusively from that, that farm that you saw there, the Northern Lights Farm and Distillery in Fort Nelson, British Columbia. Um, and it had, it's good for the for skin and hair and uh, even like helping enhance moisturization. So if that's something that you struggle with, if you're experiencing a lot of dry skin, maybe add some Northern Lights Black Spruce to your, um, your moisturizer routine has the really rich and smoky evergreen aroma, has a grounding aroma when applied to the feet and spine or neck and creates a calming experience when used aromatically. Um, it has alpha pinene, that's one of its most important active constituents. And that has an anxiolytic um, like effect in mice. So there's a lot of studies showing alpha pinene and what that, what that means is like it helps with anxiety. They take, they give these mouth, these mice, um, inhalation of alpha pinene, which any of these, uh, spruce oils are going to be high in as an active constituent. And then they put, undergo this like very hard maze test and the, the, um, uh, mice that were given, um, just the control of just like smelling water vapor, um, had a, had a far less ability to handle the stress of the maze. Um, they, they, the, the mice that had the alpha pinene, um, smell, they were able to go further in the maze and endure longer in the maze. And so I think it's a really interesting thing to think about just, just from inhalation and like what that, those, the properties of this alpha pinene and the active constituents can offer us in our bodies. Um, so if you find yourself doing an anxious task or something that um, you're sort of dreading or that stirs up anxiety in you, um, maybe reach for that Northern Lights Black Spruce and take a few whiffs or put it in your diffuser while you do your work um, and see uh, what kind of help that can offer. Emotionally, um, it is, the emotion is attack, a psychic attack. So, I mean, it, that kind of feels like anxiety though sometimes, right? It's like the psychological thing. Um, the other side is harmony. 
And the way out is I am centered. So you can see how everything that we've just talked about with that Northern Lights Black Spruce points back to those kinds of things, right? Um, grounding, it's encouraging, it's calming, it helps with anxiety. So this is a really great one, even especially for men, for the, like beard oils and hair and things like that. It's a uh, such a strong and earthy grounding centered oil that um, it's it's one to it's one to have with you. Um, this is a great one also as we start getting out Christmas trees. If you have a fake tree or you're looking for uh, a pine like smell, Northern Lights Black Spruce is a really great Christmas. Christmassy smell and when combined with some of these other ones it makes for a really good um, fun uh, diffuser setup. Um, I just want to make one more I want to make a plug one last plug for the simplified line. This is the Jack uh, um, Jacob and Kate Jake and Jake and Kate the simplified line where they're putting out each uh, season, they're putting out a comp, you know, three oils that are really easy. As you can see, I've kind of been going through my, oh, this one's not as obvious. I've been kind of burning through my oil because I, it's just so, it's kind of cliche for me to say, it's just so simple. That's the whole point of simplified is like, you don't have to go get four oils or five oils to make a diffuser blend. You literally can just pop six drops of this in. And so I have really, really loved going through the fall line here, just rotating them through day in and day out with different things. Um, and I still do some diffuser blends and that's great too, but it's just so neat to be able to grab like, oh no, I'm feeling more um, orange spice cider. Or I'm feeling more cozy cabin or I'm feeling more ginger snaps. Um, so this is a really great trio. And if, if fall scents are your type of thing, which how could they not be? It's October. Who that's what you want. This is what you want to smell in October. They were restocked um, in for this week for this as a part of this sale. So if you didn't get your hands on it the first time, um, that's your that's a plug to go check it out. Again, check out those sales. I'm I'm actually probably gonna do a different maybe live tomorrow or um and, and or sometime in the next day or two to kind of go over what some of these sales are if it, if you need a little help sorting through what should to do. I'm also looking to send a text out because these are some really great deals that I don't want you to miss out on. Um, so thanks for joining me. Um, um, and we will see you again on Monday for our uh, kind of a fun and different class, a uh, wizard themed class uh, in honor of um, the fact that it's ha Halloween, that it's a dress up month. Um, I'll just share a few uh, fun potions and other things. Um, for you to try. All right. Talk soon.